Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the Mead 2045. This is a uh, little 4-inch Schmidt Cassegrain, and it's a little brother to the Mead 2080s or similar kinds of scopes, uh, the 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrains. And like the Celestron C5, it's just a little kind of a twin brother to the bigger scope. Uh, this one dates from uh, probably the late 80s, maybe early 90s. Here's the Mead 2045 set up next to a Mead ETX. This is one of the early ones from the 1990s. And uh, you can see a family resemblance, I guess. The colors are slightly different, though. I want you to notice that. This is a little bit uh, deeper metallic kind of a blue. Of course, this is a much different telescope, too. This is a Maksutov um, a 90 millimeter. This is a 4 inch, 102 millimeter. And it's, uh, of course, a Schmidt Cassegrain. Uh, they are comparable in size, though. Uh, everything is very uh, comparable. The finder on this one, even though it's only 5x24, is probably much better than this thing. This thing is notoriously difficult to use. I even put an extension on here so that you can get your eye to the eyepiece while you're using the, at the same time that the finder is operational. So, um, there's differences, but similarities. Uh, and you can see that this one could have originated from that one. There's also a big difference here. This is all metal. This is all nice metals. This is plastic. This is the uh, horrible, awful plastic stuff that the Mead ETX is famous for. Uh, the OTA is wonderful. The mount is very not great. This is a very workmanlike kind of a mount here. This is a nice, useful mount, meaning um, it doesn't do too much, it doesn't do too little, it just does exactly the right amount. So it's a, a very good, useful little scope, a very good uh, functional little mount. This one happens to work on 12 volts. This scope, uh, I don't have the original power supply for this, but it probably came with something like this, a, a wall war kind of thing, AC, and this goes to 12 volts DC. So that plugs right in here, something like that. Uh, now, of course, I'm sure you could have bought an adapter like this. This is a standard cigarette lighter kind of deal. That goes in there also. And, of course, in modern times, you can use something like this. A little battery pack with some um, little AA batteries. Plug that in there and you've got power to go. So that's a little more convenient than some of the other versions. The operation of the scope is, of course, very traditional fairly straightforward. There's a clutch mechanism. Here's a pinion kind of a, draw, a deal for driving this. Here's your slow motion. The lock for that is up here. There's your lock for that. Focusing, of course, is with a fairly traditional kind of a moving the mirror deal. This thing is interesting. This is a dedicated this is not just an adapter, this is a dedicated star diagonal. This came with a scope. And of course, this third leg here is adjustable to a certain extent. So you can go up to a fairly, fairly high latitude, down to about, I guess that would be probably 40, 45, something like that. And of course, you can take all of this off, put this on a wedge, an equatorial wedge. This did not fit on the same equatorial wedge as their bigger scopes. Unlike with the C5 and the C8, the C5 and C8 would work on the same wedge. This one doesn't have such a thing. I believe the early versions of this had another different kind of a tabletop wedge, uh, different than this. So I'm not sure what you would do for a wedge for one of these. Some earlier versions of this scope came on a tabletop kind of a wedge and it was also a single arm fork which I did not approve of very much at the time but they're very cool looking. The Mead 2045 was clearly aimed to be a competitor for the Questar. I don't think it quite matches the elegance but it comes pretty close in terms of the form factor and the overall performance is going to be quite comparable. Mead was in direct competition with Celestron from the get-go. The C5 had been around for a few years before these came along. Um, and it's clear that this is meant to kind of try and rob some of the C5 market. Uh, it doesn't quite successfully do that probably because 
the there's still an inch more aperture here on the C5 and even though it doesn't have the nice little tilty mount kind of a thing for a form factor the C5 is a, a more serious telescope Be sure to check out my video linked in the description where I compare this scope with several other catadioptric Cassegrain telescopes. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Mead 2045. Thank you very much for watching.